I've already created this user form just to save time. You should definitely feel comfortable and uh, gain practice with making these from scratch and naming everything. So everything has a name, especially these uh, text boxes. So I have put a frame here, another frame, and I have miles and kilometers. And so again, you should know how to put all these buttons on here and so on and name them. So let's just go through what everything is named. This first one is, not, is named distance, D-I-S-T. This second one is volume, V-O-L. Then the outputs, so when we press go, we're gonna use the uh, inputs here for either mileage or kilometers and gallons or liters. And we're gonna output miles per gallon and kilometers per liter uh, for both of these. So this thing is named MPG. That's gonna be one of the output fields. This is named KPL. We've got a go button and we've got a quit button. I've also got these uh, option buttons. So we have miles, kilometers, that's just KM, gallons, G-A-L, and liters. So let's go ahead and put the code in here. The easiest button to code is the quit button. So I'm gonna double click on quit button. The name of our form is fuel calculator. So there's two ways to quit and I'm gonna use unload, unload fuel calculator. And that will then delete anything that the user has put into the text fields of that user form. One thing I didn't put on here is a reset button. So if you'd like, you can put a reset button. The reset button will just unload the fuel calculator form and then you can show it again. So let's go ahead and code the go button. So I'm gonna double click on the go button. Now we're gonna start everything in a two way if then, because what we've got is the distance can either be miles or kilometers. Remember radio buttons are booleans, they're either true or false. So this is called miles. So I'm gonna say if miles, then, and then we're gonna do whatever assuming that distance is in miles. Else, we're gonna assume that it's in kilometers. So inside the miles, we're also gonna have another if then, and that is if gallons, then, and then we're gonna have an else. So if we haven't selected gallons, remember gallons corresponds to this radio button here, then we're gonna assume, so if gallons isn't selected, then we're gonna assume that we're in liters. So I've got that, we have the end if, and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this, because essentially what we've got is four different options. We can have miles and gallons, miles and liters, we can have kilometers and gallons, or we're gonna have kilometers and liters. So we're gonna have four different cases here. For each of the four cases, we're gonna have two outputs. We want to output the miles per gallon, that's MPG, and we also want to output kilometers per liter, which is KPL. The easiest two are miles per gallon and kilometers per liter. MPG then is equal to distance divided by volume. The other easy one to do is kilometers per liter. So if we're not miles, then we're down here in kilometers, but we're here kilometers per liter and kilometers per liter then assuming we've checked the right things which sort of uh, directs us to this last one here then kilometers per liter is going to be distance per volume because distance will be in kilometers volume will be in liters for each of these four options we're going to have mpg and kpl so we just use typical conversion factors uh, if you're not quite comfortable with the math here these are just conversion factors because for example, here in this first one, we have distance is in miles, volume is in gallons. So what I'm doing on this in the numerator here is converting distance in miles to kilometers. And then I'm taking the volume in gallons and converting that to liters. So we're just going to do this uh, for the other six cases. We're going to put in these conversion factors. And so I've spent some time doing this. I've also added the format number, which will round the answer to the nearest, to the tenths place. So we've got all of our results here. And now I think we're ready to go. So now I can go to my fuel calculator. I can, uh, let's just press run here. Let's do a couple things so we can kind of test. So if I go 100 miles in five gallons, I should get a gas mileage of 20 miles per gallon, which seems right. Um, I can also, let's do 100 kilometers in 
five liters. I don't think that's, uh, I don't know if that's on the right order of magnitude, but we can, uh, we can calculate, we get 20 kilometers per liter. And let me just make sure some of these other options work, miles and liters, and so on. And then the quit button works. Now the last things we need to do are we need to make it so that we can run this from the spreadsheet. In order to run it from the spreadsheet, we need to assign a button. So I need to have a button here. I'm going to go insert button. But before we can insert a button, the button can only run a normal module. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a module in which we show the fuel calculator form. And I'm calling this run form. So now on the spreadsheet, I can insert a button. So I'll just put it here and I can assign that to our run form module. And then I can rename that something like calculate. So when I press the calculate button, it's running the run form module, opens up our user form, and now I can quit. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna do is, if we're sending this to a client or coworker, we want it to automatically open upon when they open up the workbook. So I can put an event handler behind this workbook I can uh, go up here to workbook. There's two things you can do. You can either do fuel calculator.show or you just type in the name of the run form module. So when we open up, we're going to run that and we're going to open up the user form. Either way, you're going to get the same result. But you definitely need a module with fuel calculator.show because the button here is assigned to that and you can't just open a user form using a button. I forgot to mention though, and this is really important, how you dim variables for working with user forms. Anything that goes into one of these text boxes that you put on the user form, or any of the variables uh, that you use, for example, these Boolean radio buttons, you don't have to dim those variables. So if I go ahead and open up the code behind the go button, MPG, KPL, those are variables on our form. So this is MPG and this is KPL. So you notice that those are not dimmed up here at the beginning of the private sub. If I had some other variable in here that's a function of the text boxes, then you would need to dim those variables. But anything that's on uh, the user form, uh, for example, gallon here, remember that's the radio button, that these do not need to be dimmed. And in fact, if I went ahead and dimmed MPG as a double, then it actually doesn't work correctly. So let's run this. If I go 100 miles in five gallons, it, it doesn't work. So if you redimmed MPG as double, it works, but it just doesn't output it onto the onto the text field because it's it's thinking that MPG is a new variable inside the private sub, and it forgets that MPG is that text box on the user form. So you don't dim the variables that are text input boxes on the user form, but if you're using new variables inside the subs, then you have to dim those.